So today Theresa May finally announced she is going to resign. You know, we've really been expecting this for so long at this point, but I'm just going to give my live reaction to it. So this is going to be an actual live reaction, so it's not going to be an edited video. So if I mess up some words or I have to repeat myself, I apologise. So we're just going to get into this. I'll read a BBC article quick. So it says, Theresa May has said she will quit as Conservative leader on the 7th of June, paving the new way for a contest to decide a new Prime Minister. In an emotional statement, she said she'd done her best to deliver Brexit and it's been a matter of deep regret and she has been unable to do so. Being Prime Minister has been the honour of her life, she says. And then she was crying during the speech and she said, I will shortly leave the job that has been the honour of my life to hold. The second female Prime Minister, but certainly not the last. I do so with no ill will, but with enormous and enduring gratitude to have and had the opportunity to serve the country I love. Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn said Theresa May's right to resign. She's now accepted that the country's known for months. She can't govern, and nor can he divide, nor can her divided and disintegrating party. Whoever becomes the next Tory leader must le let the people decide our country's future through an immediate general election. So, Jeremy Corbyn not really mincing words, and Scotland's first minister Nicola Sturgeon saying he w she wishes her well, but despite profound disagreements, including on Brexit, but added. The prospect of an even more hardline Brexiteer now becoming PM and threatening a no deal exit is deeply concerning. Added to the experience of the past three years, this makes it all the more important that Scotland is given the choice of becoming an independent country. And that's another little issue, you know, that's going on in the background still is Scotland independence because obviously they want to stay in the EU and Britain is trying to leave the EU in general. And, you know, England and Wales mainly want to leave and Northern Ireland and Scotland want to stay. So it's a bit of a shit show. But here was a good tweet I wanted to read as well. So um, Hapol2018 says, So those feeling sorry for Theresa May, 4 million kids in poverty, 1 million food, ba food bank users, 1.9 OOP in poverty, 8.4 struggling to eat, 8.4 million, NHS being systematically privatised, the disabled having their benefits cut, the worst homelessness I have ever seen. Sorry, but I've got no sympathy for Trexit. So this video is only going to be discussing what is her legacy and it's no doubt she will be remembered as one of the worst Prime Ministers we've had in the last uh, maybe century and a half and stuff. She really is terrible. But maybe, you know, David Cameron poisoned the well for a bit. But she she took this up, you know. She, in the background of Brexit, she didn't campaign hard for a main and that was her stance and everything. And then she went for the leadership last time and she beat Boris Johnson. And people were happy about that because it seemed like a more rational person but she's just really an extension of the Tory government that came before. And that's what people need to understand in the UK. We don't really say, well, we do say like the May Premiership or the Cameron Premiership, but it's really just like one Tory government. And that's why Prime Ministers can switch without the government changing and stuff. And it would be nice to have a general election on this because, you know, Boris Johnson is the favourite to become the new Prime Minister. I don't think I would, I, I don't think in general I've ever been so embarrassed of a person who's going to be Prime Minister, because he used to be the Mayor of London, and it's weird, people used to actually like him, because he did some alright things as Mayor, but now he wants to become Prime Minister, and he probably will, and his whole stance on this Brexit thing, he's just been messing with it the whole time, and he's really been hurting Theresa May whenever she's trying to get a deal, leading these hardline Brexiteers, and when he comes in, you know, is the possibility we're going to get a no-deal Brexit because of someone like that and all his supporters, and that is super depressing, so hopefully what I'm hoping with these European elections, the Tories will just be like, UKIP and the Brexit party, we don't even need those votes. We shouldn't even try and appeal to them. Let's just appeal to the centre ground again. Let's just appeal to centre-right people and right-wing people, not like far-right people, because that's the whole point of the EU referendum in the first place. David Cameron was scared the Tories were going to start losing seats to UKIP, and that's why he calls a, the referendum to try and get rid of that support for UKIP. And look how that turned out. It's created this monster in the Brexit party. So it is pretty depressing, you know, Boris Johnson will become Prime Minister, and he was already in the government, and he's mates with, you know, David Cameron and stuff, so he's just an extension of that sort of establishment. But yeah, Theresa May's record, you know, you have Grenfell Tower, and her response to that, which was awful, because she didn't even go meet them properly, because she was scared they'd protest her. A real leader wouldn't care about those things, they'd, you know, be a human, go visit these people. But obviously the Grenfell Tower is just a monument to Tory austerity, all these cuts, you know, all this screwing over the poor, because in the UK, it's, it's sort of like the same ideology in the US, but not as extreme, it's like, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, work hard, you don't want to be like a benefit, king or queen or anything like that, you want to pull yourself up and the Tories are going to help you because, you know, we actually like the working class, but it's all a lie, you know, why working class people vote for Tories time and again is really beyond me, probably the same reasons as in America, they think they're pro-military, pro, you know, workers, I guess, even though they're not even pro-union, so yeah, she remembered terribly, and I'm trying to think what else she's done. Because she hasn't really done much. But she's just been trying to push her awful Brexit deal, which no one likes, 
on the commons time and again and she just would not give up power and the whole thing I, you know i made this video about what the reality of brexit really is and i was talking about it's just a tory leadership contest under the guise of something else so the whole time in brexit she was just trying to hold on to power and not let boris johnson take over that was actually 90 percent of the brexit stuff that's why she kept changing the deal to you know really pacify the right wing of her party and pacify people like Boris Johnson and look where it's led us you know three years later three years later next month since we voted to leave and nothing has happened and we're not even supposedly leaving till the end of October and even if we will leave at this point is you know up in the air as well so it's pretty crazy situation and you know people who wanted to leave must hate her because she's so incompetent people wanted to remain hate her as well because she was pushing all this stuff on us and you know, the arguments to leave are there from maybe a socialist point of view, but anyone who trusts the Tories to get it for them is deluded. And now look who we got with Boris Johnson. And maybe it's a warning to the US because, you know, you want Trump impeached because he's such a criminal, but Pence might be worse because I think Boris Johnson is going to be worse than Theresa May. And I'm not really looking forward to having a prime minister that I both hate so much and I'm super embarrassed of. Now I'm going to feel like how you guys feel in America of Donald Trump. I can't believe this person is going to be re representing the United Kingdom as the main leader and stuff. And I'm kind of glad Theresa May is still the one meeting with Donald Trump because even though she's a suck-up, uh, Boris Johnson would be so much worse because he's like mates of Steve Bannon and stuff. So at the end of the day, all a shit show. We need another general election to really vote the Tories out. Hopefully, you know, they lost pretty big in the European elections. They lost pretty big in the council elections, so it's not looking good for them, especially with this change in leadership. And we'll see if Boris Johnson wins. You know, it's not a certainty. There's going to be an open leadership contest. There's going to be a lot of people running. And maybe like last time, they might choose someone like Theresa May rather than him because there's an alliance in the Conservative Party and the membership and everything that won't vote for him again. We'll see about that. And obviously, Michael Gove, his best mate, did him dirty last time, stabbed him in the back by running as well. So we'll see everything that happens with Theresa May's successor. But I'm not hopeful. And this is just my general reaction to it. Everything's still a shit show. And she's got two weeks left about. And I'm not sad to see her go. Her and David Cameron are going to be remembered for destroying this country. But because she was Home Secretary before. So that's just in charge of domestic policies. So they're going to be remembered for that. All these people in this government are going to be remembered really, really poorly. And history, I don't think, is going to be kind to her. Is she worse than David Cameron? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. She's an extension of David Cameron, and he created this Brexit mess. So I'd say he's worse, but she's not, you know, too much better. 